to help us understand this recent development. Good to see you, uh, Moise. You, you know, so how should we refer to Senator John James Akban Udoadega, uh, the National Secretary of the Ruling All Progressives Congress, or should we say the former National Secretary? No, I don't understand the question. Please, can you come again? Well, let's talk about, you know, some of the key things happening, the development happening in the APC. Uh, it looks right. like, uh, some are already saying that it looks like there are factions. Uh, one side still thinks that May Malabuni is still the chairman, while uh, another thinks that uh, uh, the governor of Niger State is the chairman. It, you know, being someone who's uh, uh, been there before, how do things like this work, you know, for or against a party that is going into a national election? Well, I've said this thing severally in the past, even on this particular forum, that the party is bound to implode. So it shouldn't be news to anybody what is going on right now. But beyond that, what has happened uh, to my Mala, for example, my view is that as at now, I still will regard him as the chairman of the caretaker committee. Why do I do it so? If you recall that he ascended that position through the power of National Executive uh, Committee of the party, that is the NEC, actually uh, appointed all of them as members of the capital. So for him to be removed equally, certainly there must be a meeting of the NEC to get him removed. My understanding and information I gathered over time in the last couple of days is simply that they went for his medical, thereby uh, leaving the portfolio of acting chair, uh, chairmanship to the then deputy governor of Niger State, Governor Belo. So I still want to believe that that is still the status quo. Uh, and I say so in view of the legal position on the subject. But for, uh, like I said elsewhere, the truth of the matter is that if you cannot get NEC to remove them, one of the ways to get them removed is to get them to resign. So I wasn't surprised this morning when the National Secretary claimed that he has resigned. I'm sure certainly, even if he has not resigned, I understand that the party's neck has been convened, it, they will certainly be removed for several uh, breaches that has been alleged over time. But the implication of it all is that they are going to continue to wobble like this into the pre-party nomination, which will now exacerbate the situation into the general election. So they are seriously endangered vis-a-vis -vis -vis the general election. That's the summary of it all. But again, I think you, you just brought a perspective here, which also uh, is legal in, in your analysis, talking about how best to uh, remove uh, the chairman, either through resignation or through uh, the neck coming together. And some have also said that uh, going by the powers of the president, he can, you know, summon and ask him to resign. Now that hasn't happened. Do you think that this qualifies as a coup if this is what it is that May Malabuni has been removed without neck and without any resignation? Undoubtedly, that would be a coup. Certainly it would be. Uh, and th this uh, implosion which you had spoken about, uh, you know, months ago, uh, do you see the APC as a party getting its acts together before its national convention uh, for March 26? It's practically impossible. Practically impossible. And i give you just one instance. Just yesterday, uh, the party claimed to have sworn in a number of chairmen for the various state chapters. And I tell you, in not less than half of those states, we still have cases in court challenging the purported Congress is there. And so in one or two or three, as I did, the court has nullified them. And that will continue. I see it continuing in a lot of them because the truth of the matter is that the party claimed to have adopted consensus in, in electing, in quote, this chairman. And consensus can only be where there is no dissent. Once there is one human being or one contestant saying no, then that can never be a consensus again. And that is sufficient as a basis for nullifying whatever they have come up with, whatever they, that is the product of the purported congresses that they have had over time. 
Well, a whole lot has been thrown up, you know, thrown out at Nigerians just before we came on. Uh, news of the governor of Ebony State in southeast Nigeria uh, who defected uh, from the uh, opposition the PDP to the APC. And some are trying to understand the legal implication. Now you're talking about crisis or dissent uh, in political party. Uh, let us in on what the, the, the book says. Uh, how uh, should uh, anyone leave a party before uh, you get uh, a smooth sailing without any kind of <coughs> obstruction through the legal processes as we've seen in Ebony State? Well, my understanding, if you go by the constitutional provision, it will appear that you can cross carpet where there is a crisis in your party at the national level. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as a date, the constitutional provision appears to apply mainly to the legislators without any corresponding provision for the executive. But I have not read the judgment of the court, but I tend to believe that the court must have told the reasoning of the Supreme Court in recent time in insisting that it's political parties that actually contest election. And if that reason is that there are several avalanche of decisions of the APS court in that regard now that is a party that contests election. And if it's a party that contests election, wants to leave that party, then certainly you cannot claim benefit under that, the, the new, your new party. And I think that must be the reasoning of the judge. What is a jurisprudence that is developing, most likely will be tested at the Supreme Court, but I suspect, I heard, that the Supreme Court is likely to tow that reasoning. Of course, some lawyers have said that there have been earlier decisions where the Supreme Court have said that since there was no specific or express provision, just like in case of the legislators, that if it, an executive crosses from one party to the other, then that provision is inapplicable. But in recent time, like I said, the jurisprudence appears to be shifting in favor of the fact that it's the political parties that are contesting election. And if a political party contested election and won, that particular uh, party remain in that government, in that office, regardless of the occupier. So once the occupier leaves, it's just for the political party now to substitute. In fact, that's the extreme situation. But in this situation that we have at that there, boy, situation, it seems that the judge itself is magnanimous to also say technically that there should be a runoff, more or less. But otherwise, in my own very strong view, once they leave and the party has won election, it's not for the party to... Let, 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 me, let me close on this. Let me close on this, uh, Dr. Banner, quickly. Uh, let me jump on this, uh, you, you know, by virtue of the fact that you're a lawyer, a senior advocate of Nigeria, and a teacher of the profession. Uh, if that is what it is, uh, the way you have analyzed it according to the books, uh, does this mean that the PDP, where the governor was before, may likely be producing the governor of the state. Well, the, uh, the pronouncement of the court, the, I've not read it, like I said, but as I added on the, uh, on, 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 in the media, it's to the effect that a runoff more or less be conducted rather than PDP automatically substituting. Dr. Moise Banre, always a pleasure. Thanks for your time. My pleasure.